can you earn a living just through value for value? Welcome everyone to another episode of the Value for Value podcast. My name is Kyron, host of the Mere Models and Mere Models Book Reviews podcast, but also, well, actually also the Value for Value and another one called Rosanias in Spanglish, but we'll get onto that soon. This is the podcast for those digital creators who want to have a deeper connection with their audience and also be able to monetize that. And in this episode in particular, we're really gonna be focusing on the monetization. I've talked a lot about value before, this time we're going to talk about money, 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 and whether you could be able to go full time using the value for value model, because I've talked about it a lot, but I haven't really provided many case examples of people who have gone this full route and whether this is actually the route to try and go full time or if you want to do something else. So we'll we'll look at that in particular. I've got a lot of graphs and I can tell you my personal experience and I've got a lot of data to, to back up what I'm going to be talking about here. So yeah, let's just um, dump into it, jump into it. So I think uh, to start off with probably the scariest thing about value for value, apart from first starting to ask, which is really uncomfortable saying, because it kind of feels like you're begging, like, oh, please, please help support the show. It's, it kind of feels like, oh my God, like, oh, it's, it's like I'm begging for it. Once you get over that barrier, which I have talked about in previous episodes, I think the, the next one is that there's no guarantees. And so it's really a, you just have to start, start trying and, and see how it goes. And there's no fixed income. There is no contracts. There is no, the, there's nothing written and set in stone. And uh, so in this case, it's like, well, how do you, how do I know if it even works? So to start off with, there is one big case example, and this is no agenda. So no agenda is Adam Curry uh, and John C. Dvorak's show, which they have done for geez, like 16 ish years. Now they started off a long time ago and they have proven that it works absolutely they they do solely value for value no ads only supported by their people listeners they call them producers at home and uh, they don't have paywalls don't have anything like that and they've been doing it for a long time and have been able to support themselves and if you go into their show and listen to the amount of donations coming in it's a fair bit of money you can go okay yes definitely these these guys are able to support themselves and their families through this but they are a huge, huge outlier. I went on a little discovery journey with their show because I don't actually really enjoy the show that much. It's talking about news and media, which I'm, I'm kind of iffy about, don't really care, and politics. And but, but I was just seeing like, okay, how did they start this off? What was it like for them? And just from the get go, you know, you're a huge outlier if you're getting 100,000 listeners per episode before you've even published 50, which is what they had. Now they were, you know, both of them were well-known successful before they were doing the podcasting. Uh, they were doing it when the podcasting wasn't a saturated market or when there was certainly a lot less people. All of these reasons you can go, okay, they're, they're a bit of a, an outlier for sure. And so uh, when I look at other types of shows which have adopted the value for value a lot of them come from the no agenda sort of nation um, because they they heard about it there this is where the model was created and when i look at them most of them i would say are, are kind of hobbyist shows I, I haven't found one which i'm certain that yes they're doing this full time as well and so i wanted to know you know is this going to work for someone who is wanting to go full time will this work for someone who uh, really has a passion for podcasting. And so we'll just limit it to podcasting here and not go into the other types of digital media. If someone is a podcaster and wanting to do this, can they actually go about doing this? What are some data, some sets? Do we have any case studies? Can uh, Is there any way to kind of predict if this is possible? And so I have decided to do that myself. So I really want to become a podcaster. That's the only thing I really want to do engineering which is what i used to do didn't not my cup of tea i would rather not do that <laughs> if possible and so uh, i have give you a little bit of backstory here of my history of of podcasting so i have four main shows the first one was mere models the kind of like flagship one uh, this is what i started in september of 2019 with my co-host one I had another show uh, called Rosenias in Spanglish, which I started in December of 2020. 
And this was where I would do book reviews, but in Spanish. And I called it Spanglish because my Spanish, Spanish is my second, nat- uh, my second language. I'm not native in it. There was a lot of ums and ers and certainly times where I would just say an English word because I didn't know the Spanish equivalent. I had another show called Mere Models Book Reviews, which I suppose technically started on February of 2021. It actually started much earlier uh, in terms of producing actual uh, book reviews, but these were in the Mere Models feed. And so it was of uh, February 2021 where we broke it up. And so once again, I do this with Juan, but I'm, I'm the main one. I do most of the reading. And that goes into, uh, it went into its own feed. And so technically that was when the Mere Models book review started. And then the Value for Value show started the very one you're listening to right now of August of 2021. So those are the four podcasts that I had in an RSS feed. I had another video type one, which was a play around thing, but nothing serious. And so uh, all of these have had the access for ability to, for people to boost into the show, to contribute back. What has happened across these four shows? We're now sitting here of the 4th of October, 2023. So geez, what uh, a solid two years from all of them at least, and four years from the, the main Mere Mortals one. What has happened from that? And uh, how would I have compared if I had gone through what you would say maybe is the standard route of advertising. And the good thing for all of you dear listeners at home is that I am a nerd. I mentioned I'm an engineer and so I collect data. I really, really like data. And so what have I done? I've collected all of the data from everything that we have received in terms of contributions from from the mere modelites at home is what, is what we call them. And the, yep, I'll, I'll just start listing off some of this here so you can get an idea. And I wanted to break down, I suppose, right at the start here, the difference between streaming and boosting and the different payment methods. And so we have focused very heavily on the ability to do uh, payments through digital money through Bitcoin. So this is the, the streaming and the boost, which I've talked about in previous episodes. And Uh, We have only very recently kind of set up a PayPal link for someone to send fiat money if they wanted to. And uh, so most of all of this data is actually from the the boosting because that's that's what we've focused on. That's what we wanted people to do. So value for value, once again, is not Bitcoin. It is not sending things through uh, these apps and and online like that. It is people contributing value back. But because we, that is what we're focused upon, that is what we have received. So we actually don't have any fiat payments to, um, to speak of. And if we had focused upon that, I'm sure, sure we would have. So that's just a, a, a caveat there to start with, and this is uh, the, the numbers. So if you look on your screen now, and I would encourage you to get a, a podcasting app, which allows you to do that because there's gonna be a lot of data and graphs uh, appearing in the chapter art. So good ones for this would be something like Podfans, like uh, Curio. Uh, let's start with mobile. Podfans on the mobile, they've got a, a new uh, progressive web app, which is really cool. I uh, would also encourage you to look on Fountain and uh, on, geez, even Podcast Addict, I know brings it up. I know Podverse brings it up. Breeze brings it up. Anywhere where you can get chapters and you can see things on your phone would be valuable for for this. And so if you look on the top box here, I've got uh, as of April 1st, 2023. So this is where I had a a big collation of all the the data. And you can see I've split it up into three different shows there, the mere models, the book reviews, and the value for value. And I've also split it up into the boosting and streaming. Altogether, uh, as of April 1st, 2023, I had about 4.36 million Satoshis coming in. And from now on, I've been doing these kind of quarterly reports. And so skipping quarter two of 2023, we just passed quarter three, which is as as of the end of September. And once again, if you look on your screen there, you can see I've split it up into July, August, September and gotten real niche with the details. How many sats per um, show or in terms of boosting, in terms of streaming, converting this into Australian dollars. What was the total Uh, from that quarter three? We had 1.26 million. And so the first thing that really stands out here is streaming amounts are are typically about 10 to 13% of the total that comes in. And the boosting, this is uh, 
messages or one-time payments uh, which someone has sent in are about 87 to 90 percent so you can see okay most of the revenue is coming in via the boosting so why is this and i guess um I, I, yeah it's it's definitely heavily skewed towards it not necessarily with the messages and and why is this and is this necessarily a good or a, or a bad thing the one of the things that got me really into the the programmable money the the aspect of people being able to support in their podcasting app which just makes sense if you want to do it you shouldn't have to go out to different links and click on all these things like it's best to be able to do it within the actual app was oh you know i could I, there's this real appeal that people could pay for the back catalog um as in i've got all of this all of these things set up what if someone is going back and finding the mere models for the first time they're going back to the very first episode and they're listening all the way through oh my god they could they could actually you know be paying me that whole time as the as they're doing that isn't that awesome and that was a a thought in my mind have i actually seen that no no that hasn't typically tended to happen um and i think perhaps the difference for this is is something like I, I was thinking of this as, as in, you know, music royalties. You just create it one time and then uh, you can kind of get paid forever perpetually. Wouldn't that be awesome as long as it is popular? Uh, so what, what's the difference? Is my content just not evergreen enough? Are people just not going back to the, the very first episodes and, and listening in? Uh, are they just, yeah, is it just something that's, that's not uh, valuable enough to do that? Uh, I actually think it's a, a different reason. I actually think it's because the mechanisms for, for doing this is, is actually quite different and that the incentives for people boosting in and contributing to the show uh, is, is, not, is not necessarily related to past content. It's more about the, the current stuff. And so you can ask, why, okay, why do people boost? That's obviously the, the main thing that's, that's driving it. Um, that's driving, I suppose, revenue into the show, if you want to call it value, let's call it that. Um, and the main reason is because of the feedback loop. And so what you see on your screen now here is just a collation of uh, our four biggest supporters, and then also a list of every supporter that who, who has contributed to the show of about a thousand sats or more. There was a couple of people right on the, on the boundary point who I included in. And so what, what can you see from this? Well, uh, the collective support is what I've labeled all of the streaming payments coming in. And so this is actually our third biggest supporter in terms of, of raw numbers. And we have two people, uh, Peter, the baller booster, the Slav, and Dave Jones, who has um, been very supportive of, of my particular show from Podcasting 2.0. And then Chris Fisher coming in, in in the fourth position from Jupiter Broadcasting. They have been you know, some of our biggest supporters. And if you just tallied up the numbers, if you just look at Dave and, and Peter together, they are about, um, about half of the amount we've totally, we've received in total. I'll talk about the, the total numbers in the, um, in the next chapter, but, uh, you know, their rough 3 million sats is, is about half of what we've received coming in. And, this is where it's going like, okay, well, um, how, how should I like look at this in terms of like, is, is this actually one, one of the things I have said about the value for value model is it's, it's kind of decentralized, you know, you're not relying on one particular advertising company that could just pull the rug away at any moment or they go bankrupt, or this is one of the aspects about the value for value model, which is, is, is a nice thing. But then I look at this and I go, oh, well, I've got two people. Who have contributed half of everything that we've received isn't that super risky and it is it is kind of but uh when i think about this as well i go you know there is now 82 different people who have contributed varying amounts of of um of support through to the show there was a period where peter was just boosting in tons and tons and tons as of the, like the last six months year he, he dropped off and you know what actually happened other people started to step up we had other people new timers coming in boosting in i actually saw um a new a new name just boosting into the mere mortals literally about 10 minutes ago and the the thing that 
works with a value for value. It kind of just works out in the end. Adam talks about this a lot, <laughs> which is it's kind of frustrating if you if you don't have any data and numbers to back this up because it's like, what do you mean it just works out in the end? Um, but but I think the thing is, uh, it, it works in the sense that if you continue to provide good value, it it will people will step up. People will notice this, they will contribute. And if you ask for it, and if you make it known and apparent that they need to contribute, they will. And I, I have the numbers to back this up and I'll, and I'll talk about that in a second. So yeah, it, is it risky? Yes, but I feel like this unequal distribution is always going to occur no matter what you're doing. I'm, I'm almost certain it's the same for no agenda. Their top five, 10 producers is what they call them. Uh, they would be dwarfing the amount of other contributions that they have received. But, you know, if it all goes up, then it all goes up. You know, the, the top boosters, the top people supporting will support more. And then those ones who at the moment are, are supporting for us, you know, a thousand sats, which is what, 40 Australian cents, something like that. That's, that can actually change to, you know, 10,000 and then it'll be $4. And it's like, oh, okay, awesome. That's, that's cool. That's something new, something interesting. So let's jump on to the next section here, which was, okay, it's been about two, 2.25, two years and a quarter since I found out about all of this. So first of all, in terms of like total numbers and things, the, the four years that I've been doing podcasting with the mere models, it's only been 2.25 years since we've actually allowed anyone to, to send stuff into us because we were just doing it somewhat as a hobby at the start with getting more serious uh, during the COVID times and realizing, yeah, like this is something that I, at least me personally that I want to do full time and, and one I think in the very future would, would perhaps want to as well. And so it's only been uh, 2.25 years. So since around July of 2021, since we've uh, allowed people to to contribute. And as I mentioned, that was mostly just through the the actual method of the micropayments within the apps. And it's only the PayPal that we've, we've started doing recently. And you can tell it basically captured me straight away, this, this micropayment aspect of using Bitcoin to be able to do it within the apps because how oh, we received our first Boostergram payment coming in. It was, yeah, around the end of July of 2021. And as I mentioned, I started the value for value show in August of 2021. So it was pretty much instantly where I was like, holy shit, I think this is a game changer and I, I need to know more about this and, and create a podcast to help learn for myself and then to, to teach other people what this is all about. So here's a, a graph down the bottom. You can see starting from quarter three of 2021. And then it goes for each quarter. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine data points there. And this is a cumulative graph of, of how much we've earned. And so you can see at the very start, and we received, you know, about 200,000 sats. Okay. That was, that was kind of cool for our, for our first payments coming in. Uh, and then, but, but, you know, relatively nothing. And then Q4, it's getting to about 500,000. So about the same thing. Q, um, uh, Q1 of 2022, 700,000. And you can just see the graph is just steadily becoming higher and higher and, and, and more amounts. And uh, so what I'm kind of hoping to see that this will eventually become exponential. And so uh, as of the end of uh, September of 2023, so as of four days ago, uh, we had received 6,362,678 sats in total. And this is across all of the various shows because I, I collate them, I add them all up together. And so what we can see with that is, okay, how much is that? 6.36 million sats. That's about the equivalent of 2,800 Australian dollars. So for what, two and 2.25 years worth of, of effort, two and a half, let's just say three grand, you know, that's certainly not enough to live off. No way. I, even as frugal as I am, that's, that's not enough to live off. Um, but is this the fault of value for value though, or what's going on here? Where would I be if we had actually used ads instead? Because it's important to remember 
the the shows that I have, the mere models, the value for value, the book reviews, as of this very moment, you would not describe them as big shows um, unless you were a new podcaster coming in and being like, oh my God, how do you get more than, you know, three or four downloads per day, which I have been there, well and truly been there. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not receiving like tons, tons and tons of views on or listens to, to any of these. And so I can back this up because I have data for all of these things. So let's start a comparison. We've got uh, a set number, 2.25 years. Uh, how, how would I have compared if I had been using advertising in this time, time period? Um, and unfortunately I won't be able to go that far back because the this comparison is going to be tricky whenever you start doing hypotheticals you have to try and figure out okay like what is the uh the actual num first of all what are the actual numbers themselves second of all um how can you compare these numbers are they actually going to to be working uh properly and and what is i suppose the hidden assumptions that you're you're maybe not realizing are, are in the back there and so with these with these i'm going to basically give the caveat here i've moved the podcast around multiple times and so numbers of downloads and things like that have changed dramatically i've lost numbers from that so that's the kind of data i haven't been able to collect and it also didn't matter because that data was just yeah, whatever. It's 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 just people listening in. It's kind of more like a popularity thing. It doesn't matter to me as much. And so, well, with the comparison, let's just first start off with what numbers. What is the is the numbers of downloads that we're getting? Are they actually real? And so, <clears throat> I don't have all of this as I mentioned, um, but I can do a, a little bit of independent verification for at least the mere mortal show. Um, because I have that as an uh, as two sources to be able to get it from. One is from the actual Buzzsprout, the host that I use, and one is from this tag called OP3, which is uh, stands for the Open Podcasting Prefix Project, I believe, and this is uh, maintained by John Spurler, created by him. Uh, then, what what would have been the uh, you know. Uh, Let's let's compare those two numbers, uh, the the podcasting numbers and the uh, the numbers of downloads via Buzzsprout, which have an incentive to kind of show higher ones because you know they're my podcast host, they want to show me doing well. Versus John's, which is you no, know, it's it's just a, a thing you put in your feed, a, a tag, and he it allows him to kind of collect this data and and he does whatever magic stuff that he does in the background. I don't know fully, but he's able to get a whole bunch of numbers of how how often your show has been that downloaded so if you see the the two graphs here they kind of look a little bit different in terms of the amounts of uh, downloads on individual days because they should you'd think they would match up roughly um, but what we see in total is that the the number of downloads is about the same 7200 30 different here 30 different there like doesn't it doesn't really matter so uh, we can definitely see, all right, these, these numbers seem legit. Let's, let's have a look at uh, how much I would have earned through ads through uh, this, this time period. And so I'm just taking a, um, uh, the, I suppose the time period I'm going to use is that quarter three of 2023, which I was talking about and had real good numbers from. I'm just, that's the only thing that I can really look at and, and do a comparison. So if I take that, for the mere mortal show, we had about 20,769 downloads for, for that month, according to Buzzsprout. If I look at the total numbers that I had uh, of people boosting in and the actual amount of income, it was about 575,000 sats, which uh, was equivalent to about $250 Australian. So, okay, that's all right. That's uh, across three months. Once again, it's not livable off, but it's it's um it's got some numbers it's certainly something now if i wanted to uh, monetize using the buzzsprout platform um which they do have in there um this is what it literally says on them you'll get paid for the monetized downloads you serve all ads pay the same 1.5 cents usd per download you can apply your earnings to future buzzsprout invoices blah 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 blah, blah. 
So we have a number there, 1.4 cents USD per download. This is about right. So that is equal to about a $14 um, CPM cost per mil, which is the typical uh, metric that they use. Uh, I've heard numbers, I've, I have did a bit of research. Typically it's around that 20 range, that $20 range. Some will be higher, some will be lower, depends on if you're doing host reads, depends on if you're doing just a, a straight up, you know, dynamic ad insertion. All of this makes about rough sense uh, to me. So we'll just use the number that they have, which I know I could get using, using um, Buzzsprout. So let's do some quick ad math with 20,769 downloads, multiply that by the 1.4 cents per, per download. And you get to about 291 USD, which would be 455 Australian dollars. So if we're just doing a straight up comparison of, of that, a theoretical comparison, you would say, okay, well, value for value is not as great. It's about half as great then um, for, for the mere mortal show. I think there's a lot of assumptions in there because they don't, you're not going to get a, uh, with the ad model, you're not going to get a consistent ad placed on each download. So that number will be slightly less. And I think there's a couple of things, but look, let's just say for the moment, uh, advertising wins. All right, Karen, why are you doing the value for value show? Well, this is just one set of metrics and let's jump on to the other main show, which we uh, I've been earning revenue from, which is the value for value show. And so similar deal here, we'll look at the stats from July, August, and September that just passed of 2023. For this show, it's considerably smaller than the mere models. We had about 3,000 listens, 3,008 to be exact, listens across this time period. Once again, um, because this is on Blueberry, a different hosting platform, I don't know if they have ads um, support like like um, Buzzsprout did. I didn't I didn't see it in my quick research. Let's just use the same number of that uh, 1.4 cents per download. This is equal to about 42 USD, which is about 66 Australian dollars. Now, how did I do with the boost in streaming? Well, significantly more. I got um, 665,000 uh, from um, uh, Sats coming in, which is about 283, 284 Australian dollars. So, okay, well, what's going on there? This time value for value is, is four times as much. How do you work this out? What's the, what's, what's changed, you know? Um, and I think this is where I'll, I'll just end off my, my case study, my comparison here by just saying uh, my, my little summary, I guess. So, which method is better, which if you're going to go, if you had to choose between one, like only value for value and only ads, my general takeaway would be if you've got a smaller show, I probably would say value for values is going to work best. I, I would almost certainly say value for value is going to work best. Advertisers are not interested in doing advertisements on small shows. It's too hard to monitor it's too hard to make sure that the ads are being served correctly and the amount of people just listening just doesn't make sense for them to do that if you have a small niche show um, related to a topic that you particularly love and there is only an addressable market of you know a thousand people in the world who are interested in this topic and which is kind of what um, you can do with podcasting i i saw a show recently which was uh, highlighted for its uniqueness, which was the amount of water being wasted in food production. And it was someone going on a deep dive to figure out how much water is being wasted. You know, that's an incredibly, incredibly niche podcast. Are they going to be able to get millions of downloads for, for people listening into that? Unlikely. Uh, but there would be some people who would be really interested in that show and I think would be willing to contribute to that show if you created one which was fascinating enough for, for people to, to listen to. So typically what I would say is I think that uh, smaller shows, value for value easily wins and that that is the, the correct way to go. If you're getting to a medium-sized show like The Mere Mortals, you're probably going to um, have a, a bit of a mix, you know, we, once again, we've chosen a very niche path of, of saying like, you know, 
come support us through the these new apps come support us using bitcoin it's it's hard it's difficult and so with a broad show like that like we have there which is addressed more to a a broader audience because of the way we've done it we've we've certainly made it harder if we had used paypal from the very start i'm almost certain that that number would have been closer to the ad um, section uh, to the to the ad numbers so you know instead of having only received 246 for for that um, quarter that we just passed would be closer to the 455 that theoretically we could have got through ads so i think for for kind of like a medium show like us which is getting you know roughly 100 to 300 downloads per episode something like that i would say you know e- either is kind of good just take your pick which one you want to do when you're getting up to the really really large shows this is where i'm once again you know i'm i'm kind of having to go based on feel now even though um john john c Dvorak and, and adam curry can't do it they've got a super super large show they're getting close to a million downloads per episode i would say they would probably make more if they just went through the advertising route because you can just if with with a show like that it's it's just bigger it's just there's there's a tension there's attraction coming in i feel like you could kind of negotiate that to a to a higher level than what they're receiving now the pay you know what would be the the downside to that is well they would have responsibilities in terms of advertisers they would have to make sure that they're not saying certain things that would perhaps go against the advertisers um this is where I think you you encounter a lot of the problems which I see with with the advertising model is you know self censorship, relying on that one or two big advertisers to support your show, um, of just trading I guess s- security um, of of having you know you you almost certainly know how much you're going to get per month using advertising um, because they have these guarantees like you're guaranteed to get this at least this much more perhaps if certain episodes do better and then that's where it's like i I think i think that probably you you'll earn more but you you're gonna have to decide on the trade-offs for that do you feel comfortable putting ads in front of your show Uh, are you willing to do lots of meetings with advertisers to make sure that they're they're happy with how the show is performing and all of these sorts of things so um, yeah that's that's just um, one section there I also see one in the chat here saying devil advocate if for those 2.25 years we had instead focused on advertising and not boosting so then targeting our show to popularity um, I guess in the short term it's likely we could, we could have gotten more money but at what cost in the long run is my answer so in that case yes you if you are creating a show uh and and you're making it and you want to create the most money from advertising it does need to be niche to a certain audience because certain audiences are more likely to spend i think the the most desirable is about i think it's young men from 20 to 35 is the the biggest spender category and then probably after that would be um uh, young women and then after that would be like older generations uh i think that is the yeah there's there's a whole lot of things that go into this so i won't i won't dive down that rabbit hole because uh that that that's a deep one i could i could talk about that for a fair while so we'll we'll leave it at that for the moment and um instead let's go on to some boostergrams welcome to the value for value boostergram lounge Uh, i've got a couple of things coming in here because I got a live one in, I got to call him out. Thank you very much, Adam Curry. Go, got the bat signal and he sent 10,000 sats sent using Podverse. Thank you very much, Adam. So yeah, maybe he can um, comment in and uh, and tell me if he thinks, if, if he had gone through advertising and assuming he'd gotten the same amount of people listening to it, no agenda, which he almost certainly wouldn't have because the advertising would have started to, it would have, drove away other people and drew, drawn in certain others but let's just assume he got the same amount i would love to know i would love to know if if he thinks that um he would have earned more just in straight up numbers through advertising obviously the value for value model relies on so much more and relies there's so much more value which is not 
captured monetarily in this easy form, um, but which actually is valuable. People creating a website, people like this um, Peter the Slav who sent me in this this document, which I still use for my chapters. Um, and uh, I would have had to pay someone to to like create some coding or do some things to be able to just copy and paste stuff. You know, is it's saving it's 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 money but it's it's in a it's in a different form and so it's very hard to capture uh but yes thank you very much um adam so yes uh, as a reminder for everyone i am live uh as of 10 a.m australian eastern standard time on a wednesday which is utc midnight wherever you are in the world on that tuesday and wednesday so just plus or minus your your time zone from the universal coordinated time uct i always say utc um and yeah yeah that would be the the way to to join in live and send in a boost live just like um mr adam curry the podfather has done there let's jump back into the previous booster grams we've got sam sethi making a whole bunch of um, payments sent through pod fans once again check out the progressive web app because you will get out the live bat signal uh if you are if you have, um, if you're a, a fan of the the mere models or of the, sorry, if you're a fan of the value for value show, you will definitely get that out. And um, yeah, that that app is it's gonna do some cool things. It's um, it's already very slick. I had to play around with it the other day, and yeah, looking very very nice. We also have here Gene Bean from the last show from the volunteer technologist, which I talked about and highlighted. His chat with Mitch is now out. Please check it out. It's um, it's very fascinating. He says, great show and thanks for the shout out. 2,222 sent using Castomatic. Thank you very much, Gene, my man. Much appreciated. Uh, we've got here Sir Spencer, who is of the, the Wolf of, I think he calls himself the Wolf of Kansas City. Yeah, that's it. Uh, who from bowl after bowl, he says, appreciate the self-hosting shout out. Anyone can do it if they decide they want to. 69, 69, yeah, sent using Podverse. He loves the meme numbers he does. Uh, <laughs> and uh, at using Podverse, of course, the, the open source app, which I was talking about. And then this is one where it's, it's uh, uh, I, I struggle with this and so I probably say some things wrong sometimes and so um, he's he's got another boost sent in here and he um, once again 6969 using podverse thank you and he says I think many people who are technically inclined still identify as non-technical just because they are more advanced uh, just because there are more advanced areas or aspects of tech we use that we don't fully understand hearing you identify as non-technical is like hearing someone who changes their own oil saying they're not a big car guy because they can't rebuild an engine and then he's got the uh, emoji with the bead of sweat on it you've been you've been out here running with scissors too and every day is a learning experience you're a technical guy whether you believe it or not Chiron so Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a compliment. Thank you. Thank you, Spencer. Um, my problem, I suppose, is my, my way of communicating my dislike of, of, of problem solving when it comes to technology. I find it incredibly frustrating. I, I find it almost anxiety producing at times, to be honest, because it, it feels very hidden behind the scenes. Like what? Why is this thing that was working has suddenly stopped? For example, the USB port on my laptop has suddenly stopped working. I tried to do a bit of a fix in case it was a driver thing. That didn't work, but there's still options that it could be, or it could be a an actual hardware default. Some dust has got in, I don't know. What do I do with that? <laughs> I don't like that experience. That pisses me off to no end. Uh, so when I say non-technical, I suppose what I mean is I don't have that intuitive talent nor the desire to fully dive down into these things but yes in a in a way i am because i obviously have gotten very deep into the booster gramming all of these sorts of things which other people would say uh are um oh man that's super technical i, I could never be able to do that so i yeah i do appreciate that i suppose it's the paradox paradox of life that even though i don't feel like i am perhaps i perhaps i actually am but uh it, in any case, uh, he had actually just a great chat with Stephen Bell from a curiocaster of the music side project of the split kit of Ellen Beats. 
fame. So <laughs> the guy who I was talking about uh, really on the value for value uh, music episode because he does so much. Uh, he had a great chat with him and they talked a lot about coding and, and this kind of aspect of of trying to do things for yourself, self-hosting. Um, and yeah, I would recommend checking that out. I'll, I'll, um, I'll put a link in, in this episode. And then he says, uh, have you heard no agenda? No brand will advertise with us and we would have been demonetized years ago. <laughs> 10,000 sat sent using Podverse. I have, I have Adam. I, I've tuned into a fair few episodes. Yeah, it's, um, this is, I guess the, the tricky thing, right? With the, with the ability to, to try and do these theoretical numbers. You know, I came up with some numbers just before of 245 versus 455. <sighs> that 455 is uh, it's a it's a vapor it's a wisp of air it's it's not a real tangible thing it's a it's a guesstimate and i it could very very wildly i've heard um advertising rates being double that 1.4 cents so does that mean that that number should be doubled and i've also heard it be significantly less and i'm assuming it's being on this and there's so many assumptions that come into this this is where I would probably uh, maybe recommend for someone who's all right. They're starting off a podcast for the first time, um, and they're and they're they they're really enjoying it. Perhaps they're getting some listeners coming in. They're like, okay, well, I would love to at least recoup some of the costs of hosting and things like this. What should I do? Uh, I would definitely recommend you know attempting value for value at the very least. And I'm going to talk about in my tips section about how you do that um, and. This is where, you know, screw it, we're, we're, going, we're on to the tip section. So your shows will do better if you adopt certain tactics and if you do certain things. Now, you, you heard me mentioning before, and if you looked at the graphs, you'll see, but Karen, where's the Rosenius and Spanglish? You said you had four shows, but you only, um, you only put in boosting amounts for three of them. Well, if you look at the dates of things, so the first, uh, the first boostergram we received received from um, Chad F was on the yeah that end of July period of 2021. I stopped the Rosenius and Spanglish right around that same period. It was July or August of that of that same year. So what had been happening was obviously I was doing a show Rosenius and Spanglish, the book reviews, but I never mentioned the boostergramming or any of the value for value stuff because I didn't even know about it. I had never heard of it before. So even though I subsequently later put in the value block and had the ability for people to boost in. I never talked about it. So I never got a single cent. <laughs> I never got a single Satoshi from, from anyone doing that. So uh, what you will notice is that for value for value to really work, you have to adopt certain tactics and certain things will, will work better and incentivize people to come in. Much like Adam was saying here, you know, his show, No Agenda, it got very popular because they have no agenda. They don't have advertising. They don't have people telling them what they can and can't say, whether it be in a strong form or a very soft form. They, they don't have that. And so the tactics that they have come up with, or tactics perhaps even is a strong word, the, the natural progression of their show turned into things that would uh, enable people to to boost in uh, to boost in to to send money to send value to their show and so what are the, some of these things well um look the book reviews i i didn't even bother to do any graphs or things related to that um why but it's because i've received so little from that and then you can go okay well why have you received so little from that Karen? well this is how i have done the book reviews in the past I would pre-record it, so uh, it would usually be recorded a week or two in advance um, because it required me actually reading the book and keeping on top of this is, is rather hard. Uh, so I would just post it out. I would have the, the call to action at the end. Hey, please boost into the show if you want to, like if you, if you got value from this. Um, but I never had any real good feedback loop. And so I started doing this um, uh, live one that I would do once a month, uh, the, the recap where I could address all the boostergrams that I'd received in that past month. Now, is this great for um, incentive for people to boost in? Well, not really because they'll boost in and then it's only a month later that I'm really talking about it. So what I would say, here's some of the tips for, for someone who is creating a value for value show. 
number one, first you have to ask. Make sure you ask and make sure that you let people know that it's a value for value so they can send in however much they want to. And we're just focusing on the, the, the treasure aspect here, the money aspect of it. Make sure that you ask and make sure that people know um, how to do it and that they can send in whatever amount they want that they value it at. That is um, a critical one. You need to make the the feedback loop as tight as possible. And so when they you know boost in or when they send in a PayPal or whenever they do something, you know, sending you in cash or whatever, the acknowledgement should come in the next episode if possible. And so this is where having a really tight feedback loop is is best. So you still can pre-record, but it's better to pre-record, you know, one day in advance instead of two weeks like I was doing for the book reviews. Another one, live is a really weird motivator. We just seen Adam Curry here boost in a whole bunch and I can see him also streaming in payments at the same time, which is really, really cool. If you look at things like Twitch streamers or even those NPC live streamers that you've seen on TikTok, which I find so fascinating, it's such a cool sub subgenre. Um, and so this is where it'll be a girl with a camera in front of her and people will send in a, uh, it's like an emoji, it's like a reaction which actually she can exchange for money. And so if they send an ice cream one, she goes, mm, ice cream, so good, yum, yum, yum. And obviously this is, you know, what is the value that people are getting from that? Well, it's because it's live, they do some action and someone on the other side of the world responds to that and does something. With me, it was um, with Adam just right now, it was me talking about his show. It was me talking about something that he messaged to me super super cool and it's it's the same it's the same aspect that's going on with these live streamers these twitches uh, twitch people and stuff there's just something about the live experience which which people really enjoy and so there we go live is a is another one i think creating a better show making it more easy to for people easier for people to to boost in to contribute to the show so having the funding tag within your actual show notes doing having the value block set up so that um, if someone is listening via a podcasting app they can do it directly within the app all of these things creating a better show with chapter art and images and things like this i think all of that is very you know useful essential as well um and then the final one you know consistency is critical um as passive income i'm i'm coming to the conclusion that passive income is a largely a myth just because you create a show which has evergreen content, I don't think that means that you're going to get people going back and listening, much like music royalties, where if you create one really big show, uh, one really big hit, you can live off that for the rest of your life. I, I'm not sure the same will work in podcasting. I, I, I don't think that the intangible qualities that music have of people just re-listening to something 50 100 times in a row which i have done with certain songs i don't think the same is going to happen with podcasting and uh, a podcast episode no matter how viral it goes no matter how interesting that one episode is i don't i don't think that um that passive income you're going to get the same as perhaps you could with a a hit a, a music hit a song which just really is you know something like stairway to heaven which is just going to, it's, it's stuck around for so long. So, uh, in, in this case, the consistency is you, you have to keep doing it. You have to keep putting out a show as Adam Curry has done for 16 years with no agenda, as I have basically been doing with my three, four shows for, uh, well, three shows now, the Rosenias is no longer active for a long time. And so, yeah, that's, uh, that's another one. The, the, <laughs> the passive income, uh, I think is, uh, is largely a myth. The app and service highlight for, for today, let's jump onto that. Let's wrap this up. Uh, if you haven't used um, OP3, uh, I would re definitely recommend checking it out if you want to see the statistics and real granular things. So if you, once again, if you check out your, your chapter right now, um, there's all sorts of things that he's got going on there. He's got the, uh, what, what was this called? It was like the episode over time. So you can really see how your episodes are performing. Typically you'll see it like really shoot up straight away and then have this long, long tail of people gradually listening in. Um, he's got such detailed statistics there of 
you know, which apps are people using, where are they listening from in the world, which certain countries. I don't, once again, I don't talk about non-technical. I don't know how he gets all of this stuff, but he does. Um, the, the thing with all of this is, uh, um, you know, it's uh, op3.dev is where you should go to, to check out more. Um, and it provides all sort of free data because it's open. So once again, you have to be comfortable with someone coming and looking at that any because anyone can look at it this data is out in the open so once again open source check out the the last episode um so what i would say ask your host to put in the necessary permission into your rss feed it's actually relatively simple and i think most hosts would be willing to do that uh and it can yeah just get into real granular info so would recommend uh checking that out uh, I've just got a comment here from Juan. Disagree. Passive income, even from podcast, works very well for large podcasters out there with evergreen content. Um, Tim Ferriss has talked about this in the past with some of his older podcasts. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, perhaps it's the exception, though, not the rule. Also, the reposting of old content, say five years later with no edit, does that count as passive income? Uh, yeah, I get. Mm, kind of. <laughs> it's it's not a, yeah, it's not an active effort, but um, certainly it's older stuff which I, I guess you could. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll allow it. I'll allow it one. So, um, yeah, I, I suppose that's a, that's an idea as well there. If you, if you just repost, um, old stuff that kind of can play into that consistency aspect, but, uh, yeah, look, well, just from our numbers, I can say people have not been boosting older episodes. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's episodes, which are the current, the recent ones, um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see, we'll have to grow our show bigger and then be able to, to do that. Let's, let's wrap it up here. Value for value. Who am I going to give 15% to this episode? Uh, I'm going to give it to John Spurlock for, for creating the OP3, uh, dot dev. He does a lot of, um, I, I have used some of his graphs before such in the, the podcasting 2.0 ecosystem. That episode, is it growing? I, I used a couple of his graphs from there. Obviously, I, I um, put in Ron Plouffe for, for that episode. So this is kind of a little make good uh, for that as well. And yeah, he it's podcasting 2.0 value for value. It, it only works when tons of people are contributing when we all get together. I know this episode has been very much focused on the money aspect, which people certainly are interested in. But the whole show, <laughs> this whole show is, is very much about other the other aspects of that, the connection with your audience. It's about um, the different ways that people can contribute. It's about, uh, it, it's, it's about totally changing your mindset away from extractive value of people, I need to get this. It's a zero sum game to a, um, a non-zero sum game. We can all, the, the pie can grow and we can all be happier and better. So final little thoughts from this, just for me, Obviously, I'm not at this stage yet where it is a full-time income. Uh, I'm going to work as hard as I can to make that happen. And um, if if after like 10 years, <laughs> I haven't made it, I'll have to just admit like, you know what? I just wasn't able to create enough value for for pe- for this to become a full-time thing. And um, podcasting will would therefore remain a, a hobby for me. Um, but uh I'm going to fucking try really hard. And what I've found from just my own personal life is typically when I tend to stick with things and I stick with them for years and years, um, I get better at it and, and it does tend to just all work out in the end. So, uh, thank you very much everyone for, for joining in time, talent and treasure. Uh, I would say sharing this episode with the digital creator, well, particularly with a, a smaller podcaster, I, I think would be immensely valuable for them just so they can get some rough numbers they can compare that to where they're at all of this is rough of course and um but and and you know it's niche it depends on your show and all of that sort of thing but i i think just having some numbers sometimes can can help people out um and then obviously coming and joining in live like Juan and adam did is is super super fun talent is there anything i can do to make this show better uh, Juan was just saying of uh, the audio Quality is uh, crispy clear, which is great because I have been working on that. I have been also working on uh, fixing up my studio, getting a little bit more soundproofing or it's not soundproofing. What's it called? Ah, there's a word for, for making it 
not completely soundproof, but for just reducing reverb and echo and all that sort of stuff. Um, resources that are similar to the overlap of these book recommendations, anything that uh, I've said that sparks some ideas, topic suggestions you would like me to cover, please send those in via Boostergram. I would really love that. Or you can reach out via any of the uh, social links that are down below as well. And then finally, the treasure. Look, of course, I have to talk about the <laughs> the podcasting apps and the boostergrams. That's that's the the main thing that I've been talking about. So uh, newpodcastapps.com or if you go to merementalspodcast.com slash support, I've got a little explanation there of, of how you can use a new podcasting app um, to to help support into the show. If you don't want to do that, if you don't want a new podcasting app, if you go to the Podcast Index website uh, and and boost in there, that will value all of these splits that I'm putting up. And so that would be awesome. So check out value for the number four uh, value on the Podcast Index website, or you can do it to me directly at Kyron at getalby.com. I'd prefer you wouldn't do that um, because I, I want to to send the value on to everyone else um, who are in my splits. But, you know, if you if you have to, you can also do it there. And um, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Uh, a couple of just little make goods as well. Um, I misspoke the other week there. As of now, there are four episodes left of this season. I will then probably take a small short break, m- maybe a month, maybe less, and then get back into it for season four because I am really, really enjoying doing these value for value episodes. And there was another clarification uh, from the IPFS podcasting. I said that you favorite a feed. Um, sorry, I said that you favorite an episode on that. I meant that you favorite a feed. Just a, a random little clarification there. But um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for everyone, Adam and Juan, for joining me in live. Very, very cool. I much appreciate it. And I would, um, yeah, just leave it there. To next week's episode is going to be um, it's going to be a bit of a different one. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work in terms of the live component because I'm going to be using my phone to really, um, I, w- I want to do like a showcasing of all of these different apps and uh, their features, booster gramming, how you can do it, what it kind of looks like. So it's going to be very much dominant on the video aspect, which obviously I can't do uh, here on a live audio show. <laughs> so um, there will be a video that will come out afterwards. So that one, it, it will be talking about the, um, the the apps themselves and some of the comparisons and things like that. So yeah, a uh, little heads up there for what to expect. And yeah, really hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Thanks for joining me for this longer episode. Ciao for now. Kyron out.